Hi everybody, I apologize that I cannot be here at the start of class today. I have another uh, prior engagement that I need to attend to, but we have a lot to cover today and I'll be, probably be back by the end of our class to go over some of our uh, key concepts that we're learning today. All right, so let's get started. In today's class, I have a few things that I'd like to do. These are the things that I'd like to do. So all of the materials are on your desk. I would first like to start off with a quiz whiz where I'm going to ask you 10 questions. I usually ask around roughly one to 10 questions. And it's about content that we've already covered and you can get all of them wrong or you can get all of them right. It's just to give you an idea of where you stand with what I've already taught. So we'll be doing a one through 10 and going over the answers. Number two, I want to go over what's the difference between observations versus inferences, as well as quality, quantitative and qualitative uh, observations. Because when we make a CER, it's really important that we know the difference between what's an observation and then what has some thinking and reasoning to it. Because we do have to separate observations from reasoning. when we're doing CERs. And then I would like to take a look at viruses, okay? And I want us to go through some reading on that and see if we can determine what characteristics make it similar to being a living thing and then what characteristics make it so it's not considered to be a living thing. So we need to separate out some information Okay, so we could get set up into how we would make a CER and do that higher order thinking. All right, so we're gonna get started. The first thing that we're gonna do is the quiz whiz. So take out that piece of paper that says one through 10 and we're gonna go through 10 questions. All right, so I'm just going to write that down, quiz whiz. One through 10. I'm going to ask you 10 questions. All right, so let's start with the first questions being about the characteristics of life. So I gave you a saying for the seven main characteristics of life. Do you remember what that saying is? It's called a um, mnemonic because each letter is actually standing for one of the letters. Question number two is, now let's see if we know what each of those letters stand for. All right, so one of the characteristics of life has to deal with how we make more offspring. So if you remember what that name of that characteristic is, and there are two different ways to create offspring either by a clone or by combining genetic information of two different um, sperm and egg. So if you know the two different modes of reproduction, we could put that in for number two as well. All right, number three is any trait that's behavioral or physical that aids in an organism's survival to reproduce. So it's a trait that aids in survival. All Question number four. Is one of the characteristics that have to deal with how living things are organized and so we are made up of one or more what? So, living things are made up of one or more what for number four? And 
And number five, what is the difference between growth and development? So how do these two words differ from each other? And then we even mentioned how different organisms can either produce their own energy or have to consume to get energy. Do you know the sciencey word for those that produce their own energy? I'll give you a hint, it begins with the letter A. And those that consume energy. I'll just make that over here, consume energy. E standing for energy. And now I'm gonna ask four questions kind of about graphing and about the scientific process. I gave you another mnemonic acronym for um, how to do graphing. So I'm gonna give yourself a little blank line there. Do you know that it's two words? The two words for how we do graphing. Like the little trick we have. that helps us know what to put on which axis. All right. And then I'd like you to tell me what always will go on the Y axis. So you gotta use your saying there to tell me what goes on the Y axis. And then for number nine, I'd like you to tell me the two different places you could put your independent variable depending on the amount of data you have. You go in two different places. And then we made a few graphs in the last class. So what's the difference between a line versus a bar graph? Like why would you do one versus the other? Because often teachers will say, do the best, uh, show, show this data in the best graph possible. So what would be the reason why you would select doing a line graph over doing a bar graph or vice versa? All right, so we have 10 little questions. And again, if you didn't know the answers to it, it's fine, because we're gonna go over the answers now, but this is kind of a recap from last class. So we're gonna go over the answers now. All right, so what are our answers to this? Okay, my first question was our saying for the characteristics of life, and I gave you two different sayings. I gave you rad ogre or rare dog. I think a lot of you guys chose to use rare dog, because that's the one we wrote on the board. But you could also do rad ogre you're a Shrek fan. Notice I use green. Okay. Um, the word that we use for creating offspring is reproduction. That's number two. And there are two different types of reproduction. There's asexual, where it's a clone, and then there's sexual, when there's sperm and egg that are joining together. Number three, a trait that aids in survival is adaptation. So these could be either physical or behavioral, but they aid in that organism's survival to be able to reproduce and pass those traits on. And this happens at a population level and it takes numerous generations for it to be considered to be an adaptation. Number four, living things are made up of cells. 
Okay, they're either one cell or they're multiple cells. And then we often confuse the word growth and development because we grow and develop at the same time, but growth is an increase in size or mass. And development is changing into an adult form. Question number six, um, organisms produce energy, uh, are autotrophs, and we even covered that we often simply just say plants are autotrophs, and they're the only autotrophs, but there all, are also some chemosynthetic organisms that use chemicals to make their own energy source. So that word chemo means chemicals, the word photo means light, so how organisms would be able to synthesize their own um, energy source is given in its name. And then to consume energy is a heterotroph. or distinct data. Where there is really no in-between. So again, I did that example of, uh, we had someone in the class that has a pet tarantula and then we have people that have a pet dog. We could do how many uh, pets do each of us have and there is no mix of a tarantula dog. That's the thing of nightmares right there. <laughs> or maybe it's adorable depending on who <laughs> your preference. All right, so um, then we would use a bar graph to show how many people in the class like that animal versus how many like the other animal. All right, so that's our little quiz whiz one through 10. And now we're ready for the next part of our activity today. All right, in the next part of our activity, what we're gonna be doing is looking at the differences between observations and inferences. So we understand which one is putting some thinking in it, and it could be correct, but like that's not something that you just got the information for. Because in an evidence section in a CER, that's what the E stands for, is evidence, you don't want any reasoning put in there. You just want the, the girth of the information. So we're gonna start with going over um, observations versus inference, and then we're also going to be looking at the difference between quantitative versus qualitative observations. And quantitative is numbers, while qualitative is observations that doesn't have a number. So the color of something, you can't say that's red 10, you know, like that's, no, it's red or blue or green. Um, shiny or dull, those are observations that would be a quality and not a number, numeric value. So that's called qualitative data. So we're going to do front and back of this sheet of paper. And I would like whoever is uh, with us today now to just pause this for 10 minutes. I want us to work front and back on this sheet of paper. All right, so I will put up a little timer for you to do the work. So if you are leading the class, if you don't mind pressing pause for 10 minutes, so if you just look at the time, give everybody roughly around 10 minutes to try to complete this sheet front and back on your own. And then as a class, we'll go over the answers. All right, thank you. All right, so at this time, you should have had the opportunity to complete the sheet. If you didn't, it, make sure we press pause, and that way you have the time to try it out. And now we'll go over the answers to this. All right, so we have this sheet in front of us. Um, let's go through it. So number one says the giant squid weighs 275 kilograms. So is that an observation or an inference? you should have wrote down observation. All right, the reason why it's an observation is because you could easily observe that, you can measure the animal. The, number two, the giant squid likes to eat humans. Now, 
that would be an inference unless you actually saw what it eats, <laughs> you know, or you had that information on its diet. So you don't know what its pref food preferences are. So that is an inference. Number three, the giant squid has more than one tentacle or leg. That is an observation because you could actually observe the different tentacles that the squid has. And then number four, the giant squid swims fast because it has long tentacles. So that would be um, an inference because unless we, we only have a picture there, we can't see it swim. So that's an inference. All right, number five, we're going through 10. We're going to, again, be making differences between observations and inferences and going over the answers to that. Number five, the bottle of soda hisses when I take off the cap. That would be an observation. The hissing sound occurs because gas is escaping. That's an inference. That puts some reasoning inside. Number seven, the banana is rotting because it is old. That is an inference because you're coming up with a reason behind it. Number eight, the banana has brown spots. That's an observation. You could see that. Number nine, the water in the graduated cylinder is pink. Another observation. Number 10, the pink dishwashing soap dissolved in the water. Um, in that, we would say that's an inference because we don't necessarily know what is being dissolved in that graduated cylinder. All right, so that is the part one to this little activity. Part two, we're going over qualitative versus quantitative. Uh, again, qualitative, you don't have a number for it. Quantitative has the word quantity in it, so there is a number. So number 11, the male platypus weighs an average of 2.0 kilograms. That is quantitative. Question number 12, the platypus has ankle spurs that produce enough poison to kill a small dog, but not a human. That would be a qualitative observation because there's no number in there. And that's terrifying. <laughs> okay. Number 13, the platypus has two eyes, four limbs, one tail, and one beak. Those are all numbers. So even though they wrote out the number, F-O-U-R, instead of writing the number four, that is quantitative data because it's giving you the numbers. And then number 14, the platypus is endothermic, maintaining a body temperature of about 32 degrees Celsius, which is 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, that's a number that's quantitative. All right, so now we are all done with the front of our sheet of paper and our substitute can press pause if they want to make sure everybody has the correct answers. And we're gonna be moving on to the back. On the back, what we're gonna be doing is answering some questions about, again, qualitative versus quantitative, and then we have a little enrichment activity to do, which is part four. All right, so number 15, Sandra added four drops of vinegar to the baking soda. That's quantitative, that's an actual number. Number 16, the liquid in the graduated cylinder was thick and yellow and smelled putrid. That's qualitative. Those are non-numerical observations. Number 17, the leaves on the maple tree were brown and fragile at the end of October. That's qualitative observations because you don't have any numbers to give to that browning and fragility of those leaves. 18, the planet Uranus is extremely cold on its surface qualitative again and 19 there are 12 marshmallows left in the bag that is quantitative and then 20 Jessica's sunburned arms are bright red and starting to blister that would be qualitative And now for the part three enrichment, for each of the following observations, make an inference that offers a possible explanation or conclusion. So Marie is not in school today. What would be an inference that could possibly explain why? 
maybe she's sick, you know, Maria might be not feeling well, Maria might be on vacation, you know, like we could come up with different reasons to why she's not in school. So you could write down any ex inference and explanation to why Marie is not in school today. So she may be sick. So for number one, Marie is, sorry, someone entered the room and I didn't expect it. So Marie is sick today, is sick today. And that could be the reason why Marie is not in school. Number two, it says Marie has a, had a runny nose yesterday. Um, that could again would be that Marie is may have allergies. Marie may be sick. Like again, Aragon is sick. And then number three, Marie's little brother Tony had the flu last week. That would be an observation. And that really would kind of probably solidify your idea that Marie probably got the same illness that Tony had. Marie caught, you know, Tony's flu, or Marie has the flu, right? Because if Tony, who she lives with, got the flu, then chances are she may have gotten it if she's experiencing symptoms of it. All right, and then the last set of questions right down here at the bottom. Nick did not do as well on the test as he usually does. What is a possible explanation or conclusion for that? Nick didn't study, often people will think that, but it could be Nick didn't know to study or Nick was tired. But often our first response, especially with our parents, would be like, you didn't study for that. Question, uh, observation number two, Nick is a huge Patriots football fan. So we might say Nick was watching a game, you know? Nick was watching football? or like researching football maybe, and maybe that's why he didn't study. Number three, the Patriots had their first regular season game last night. Oh, so now this is making it sound like maybe Nick didn't study for a reason. Um, Nick watched the game. And then number four, the observation that Nick keeps yawning in class and resting his head on the desk it sounds like Nick stayed up too late watching the game. So Nick stayed up to watch the game. I'm just writing my answers down too because now I'm going to put a picture of the answers on here so you could just double check your work. All right, so here are the answers for questions 1 through 14 if you just needed to double check your work. So I'll leave this up for around 20 seconds or so. And then I'll show you the back. Make sure that your answers are correct for that. All right, so now I'm going to show you the opposite page, the back. All right, so we have the top questions and the enrichment might have been a little bit different answers than what I wrote. I was just kind of going along with what those observations were each separate and then leading up to each other. So the more observations you make, the stronger your inference will, will be. Which is really important when you're doing reasoning is to get as much evidence as possible that will support that claim that you're making in your CER. So I'll leave that on for another 10 seconds or so. All right, and now for our next part of our activity, you have on your desk, it says our virus is alive and there's a reading for us to complete. What I want you to do is go through this reading and get an understanding of what the characteristics of life are, which we already mentioned, rare dog. But they actually separated these out by different numbers. Like I think they have eight different characteristics of life. Because again, remember we put DNA with the fact that cells have DNA when we wrote our um, different characteristics of life. And different teachers have a different number. But the idea is that you have all of the characteristics 
to make you a living thing. So a lot of these will be familiar to you as you go through the reading. And I want you to go through the reading and see whether you would claim a virus is living or not living. So there's a few pages to look at and I want you to go through and you can actually highlight key things as you're going through it. Is a virus a living thing or a not living thing? And then we're going to complete a CER on that. So on your next sheet of paper, um, we're gonna be putting a claim for whether viruses are alive or not. Then you're putting evidence directly from here. And then if you can try to come up with your reasoning to why. And I'll be back for the that sharing part of our lesson. Okay, thank you for uh, working on this and I'll see you soon. Thanks.